a lot of times we hear about minimally invasive surgery, and I don't like the term for hip and knee replacement because it's really still the same surgery and there's still the same bony cuts and the same deep work, and so I don't really think of it as a minimally invasive procedure. I prefer the term minimal incision, which refers more to the approach. And so a small incision or a minimal incision uses a smaller skin incision and smaller deep incisions, cutting less of the tissue to make the exposure compared to a traditional incision. A partial knee replacement is in many ways a, a truly less invasive knee replacement, but it has a much narrower set of indications. A partial knee replacement is only replacing one of the three parts of the knee. We think of the knee in three parts of having the inner or medial part, the outer or lateral part, and the under the kneecap or patellofemoral part. And any one of those three parts uh, can be replaced, and there are even some replacements that replace two out of three. The decision for knee replacement is based on basically three components, the history, the physical, and the x-ray findings. From a subjective point of view, the alteration in lifestyle, how, how severe is the pain, is it limiting you, is it keeping you from doing the things that you enjoy, that keep you active, that keep you healthy, are you able to, to walk, and it depends on a person's lifestyle what that might mean. For a 45-year-old uh, person who's working, it might mean they can't get out of bed to go to work in the morning, or they have to call in sick, or that they're having to go home early from work, or they come home from work and they're in pain and their knee is swollen and painful. A retired person might be affected in their inability to go shopping, their inability to golf or play tennis, or do reasonable recreational activities uh, as opposed to running. So it has to be that it interferes in their life in a significant way where we have a reasonable expectation that we can make that better for them. On examination, we look for uh, tender areas, pain, pain in the joint, swelling in the joint, limitations in motion. Uh, those would be the physical findings that, that would help you lean toward that uh, decision. And then on x-ray, the evidence of wear of the joint, loss of the cartilage uh, that should be on the end of the bones, and then secondary changes like bone spurs. I always like to start with non-operative management where possible. A lot of time patients have come to me having had good non-operative non management by their primary care physician. We usually start with uh, activity modification where possible, sometimes uh, changing the uh, alignment of the knee by wearing a brace or a shoe wedge that can unload the worn part of the knee. It can include medical treatment with anti-inflammatories where appropriate with the patient's other medical conditions and when considering the risks of the medication. It might include injections, injections of cortisone or injections of viscosupplementation, also known as hyaluronic acid, which is made from rooster combs or a synthetic version of that. These can all manage the pain and inflammation in the knee. They don't actually change the arthritis. They're managing the symptoms to make the arthritis livable. Sometimes uh, surgical intervention might be appropriate if a person is having mechanical catching symptoms as part of their symptoms, particularly when that's greater than pain. And Going in with an arthroscope and just either taking out a torn uh, piece of cartilage or smoothing off a rough area might, for a while, alleviate the symptoms and get a little more mileage out of the knee they have. 